hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so in today's video i don't know how many of you may have heard the story about this church uh, that has a basement and all of those things that uh, is around the news for any of you that haven't heard about it let me actually read it to you guys exactly how it is on the news and then i can just say one or two things that are there on my mind so at least then you're hearing it exactly how the news is I'll be reading this one from the Guardian, right? So it says it's not a long read. Some people don't like reading, but the thing is that way you're getting the right information. It's not like I said or them say them say. At least you're getting it from a reputable news uh, outlet. So it says police arrest Ondo pastors for kidnapping 77 persons, kids. There was pandemonium in Ondo state as the pastor of a Pentecostal church it says David and for washing. Uh, was arrested by the police for allegedly abducting more than 77 people including children in a dungeon in his church right and then he says uh, and if for washi who is the pastor of whole bible deliverance church located at valentino area of ondo state west local government of the state where some people in the neighborhood raised an alarm according to sources in the area the victims were found in an underground apartment of the church on friday evening he was said to have kidnapped them there for suspicious reasons but the guardian gathered that the pastor and his assistant camped the victims 57 adults 23 children in the church under the pretense that they are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Parents of the children were said to have forcefully mobilized themselves to the church, inviting the police to arrest the pastor and his assistant. Some of the children and their parents were also said to be attending the church prior to the incident. Um, the church noted that the police promptly stepped into the situation to douse the tension by arresting the culprit and other members of the church, sequel to complaints of some parents who reported the case to the police. In the 40 seconds video that went viral, the children were seen in a patrol vehicle of the police who took them to the police station. They have kidnapped children found in the underground cell of a church in the Valentino area of Ondo State. The pastor and some members of the church have been arrested and were also in the patrol van of the police a voice said in the video the pastor his assistant and those in police custody in ondo were moved to the state police headquarters in akure the state capital ondo state police public relations officer fumelayo Odulami, who confirmed the incident while briefing journalists in akure said the parents raised the alarm and the police sprang into action Odulami, who also urged the people to remain calm added that the command had begun proper investigation into the matter and the mystery behind the crime would be unraveled so basically to start with i feel like okay the adults that are there as long as they were not tied down or whatever the adults are old enough to make the decision to say okay we're staying here for rapture or not to stay here for rapture or whatever it is or else they are being held against their way like tied down or whatever but the children are minors they are not in a position to choose to go and stay somewhere with you in the name of a rapture so far i'm going to be honest there's nothing in this news that says that people were being sold so far let me let's stick to what we know right what they have published you know and um, nothing like any kind of uh, being sold or being trafficked or whatever they were kept there in the name of rapture okay the adults, like I said, are old enough to make the decision to say, okay, we're staying here for truly a rapture situation going on. When it comes to the children, that is when it's a crime because they are not of the age to decide to, you know, come into a church and stay with you in the name of rapture or whatever it is. But at the same time, what came to my mind is when did churches start building basements? Because if they built a basement from day one, the question is why did they build it from day one? Like, you understand? Because it's not new. It seems the church is on top and then on the ground is a basement. In that video, you can hear she said in Yoruba, she said, I want to brainwash one more meaning. What she's basically saying that they have been brainwashed or they don't want more cock or they don't know anything or whatever she's saying. So, like I'm saying, it's sketchy here and then nobody knows the full details. And unfortunately, in Nigeria, we may never even get to be well informed about what happened or whatever. But I want to speak on the area of pastors being found with one atrocity or one this and one that or the other. It keeps increasing every single day. The other time I shared a video about a, a young girl that they said that the pastor wife she was at the choir practice and the pastor's wife told her to go uh, meet her husband he wants to send her on an errand or whatever but apparently the wife arranged with her husband to take this girl and take away her innocence i already made a video about it but today we bring up this tomorrow we bring, bring up that it is unfortunate how some christians are not able to focus on the fact that it's about flushing out the imposters among us they see it as attack of christianity are you going to call this story now christianity because wait, that's 
what people don't focus on. If a man that claims that he is a pastor, he's called by God, is being caught doing what he's not supposed to be doing, even by Christian standard, or by the standard of the law on the land, both of them, he, the pastor failed in both, especially on the Christian aspect of things. You're going to say, hey, he's a man of God, you cannot question him. For what? Even the Bible said that the elders who continue to misbehave, you should um, rebuke them in front of everyone so that the others can learn. This Bible completely. The Bible didn't say they are above the Lord, don't speak to them. So when you see someone that is claiming to be a pastor, caught up in things like this, you as a Christian should say, okay, that's not Christianity. That one imposter is being extracted from among us. One person that is pretending to be one of us has been caught and removed. This is purification. This is flushing out of the wrong people among us. Another thing people forget is that, you see, Christianity is a faith where everybody is free to come and go. It has made it, unfortunately, which is a good thing, everybody is free to come and go. But the other aspect of it is the fact that it is then open to being misused, abused, with whatever people want to do, they can claim it. It has become a fertile ground for criminals to disguise themselves. Men that are into you know what I mean? Came to be a pastor. Tell church member, you know, can you tell your daughter to come and help me clean my house later? My church member will say, Ah, pastor said. And they will say, Okay. Because there is this thing about don't touch them, they are not touchable. People don't even know the meaning of that type of verse where the Bible says, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Go and look at where it was talking about. We are God's anointed. We are the ones that the Bible says, Touch not my anointed. We, the Christians, are the ones that are his children. We are his anointed. And when he says that, it doesn't make you above the law. You and I, it doesn't make us above the law. If you call yourself a child of God, but you're not living by the standard, are you going to be looking for that protection that does not belong to you as a Christian? Let's really be thinking about these things. A lot of people, yahoo yahoos, coming back to the area of people that have used, they see Christianity is free for all. They be like, it's a very good place to go disguise. Because if I'm a pastor, nobody will question me. If I'm a pastor, nobody will, and it will be looking at me twice. You know, people not, have no right to say no to what I say because of that umbrella of, you know, whatever. And a lot of these imposters, this story, like I said, we don't know the full story yet, right? But I'm speaking in general. It's not the first time we heard one thing or the other, in recent times even. Because they now feel like, okay, that makes them above the law. I've talked about pastors that when, when is the new governor, they will invite the governor. Do you know why they want to befriend him? So when the, the atrocity come out tomorrow, the governor is already their friend. And somehow that gives them a, a, an avenue to be like, they are above the law. The new police chief, they, they sort them out regularly. So that Tobaya, they want to abuse people. They can use the police to do it. Look at the ones that we, is it not police they use all the time? Coming back to the area of what I'm saying about imposters disguised as children of light, even by made clear. That angel of darkness would disguise as if it's light. Coming back to that, now you will find Yahoo Yahoo people, they are disguised inside church. Thieves, they are inside church. Think about all the, what are you talking about? They are disguised, the ones where the thief, what are you talking about? So many of them have disguised. Because they know that umbrella that Nigerians don't question because somebody is a pastor they are above the law. That's what's going on. Until we realize that somebody being a pastor does not make them above the law. Does not make them unquestionable. Until we do that, a lot of things like this will continue to happen. When a pastor says, let's go and gather here for rapture. Or let's do this. We'll do that. Or whatever. And you cannot say, ah, pastor, but that does not correspond to what the Bible says. That's why we run stuff like this. The way the Bible explained it, that when the rapture happens, so people will be busy cooking, so people will be busy cleaning, so people will be doing whatever they are doing, so people will be at work, so people will be at their wedding, so people will do the normal things they will do when rapture comes. But this one now says, let's go and gather in one place, rapture is coming. The Bible will not tell you like that. People cannot say, oh, well, pastor, that's, your time. that's not what the Bible said. Though. Nobody is questioning them. The point is this. Don't ever think that any pastor is unquestionable. Don't ever put them in a position where there are many gods in your life or in the life of your community. It was never meant to be so. The Bible says that, that the ones who will not behave well, he says you should rebuke them in the presence of others so that others can take warning. So people will come, they always comment. I ask people, have you opened your Bible to see what the Bible says? Expose them. So who's going to do the exposing? 
people can have that mindset that not everybody that claims to be Christian is truly a Christian. Not everybody, and not everybody that claims to be a pastor is truly a pastor. So it, it, if we begin to have that knowledge, acknowledge that, then we'll be able to sit back and be cautious about who we actually call a pastor. Cautious about who we say, oh, he's a man of God. That will make us put us at that position where we become very, very careful and watchful and be questioning situations when we see them. But unfortunately, some Nigerians don't like to question situations. Today, did to know that at the end of the day, this is another story of pastors doing so and so. Tomorrow, another day of pastors doing so and so. I want those that always think that people are attacking pastors to sit back and ask yourself, are those things that people are attacking really things that needs to be talked about? Instead of seeing it as attack on pastors, why don't you sit back and say, no, this person is not doing the right thing. So that is not Christianity. So this is flushing out of the imposters among us. Like I said, this story is not very clear yet. We're going by what we've seen. But uh, so far, I think we have to wait and see more. But I think we as Christians should be very conscious of the fact that not everybody that claims to be a pastor is truly a pastor. Not everybody that claims to be a Christian is truly a Christian. Not every building that is called the church is truly a church. And we really, really need to be careful what we believe. Because at the end of the day, making heaven or not is a personal thing you have to work towards. It's left for you to decide not to be one of those that will be deceived and led astray. And that's my opinion about that. Um, as always, whatever your opinions are, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.